Hi, I'm Cliff, N4CCB. In this video, we're going to dig heavily into PSK31. Now, I'm going to tell you what PSK31 is and why you should try it. I'll teach you all the major concepts. I'm going to show you how to set the audio levels on a couple of radios. I'll play some clips of a couple of QSOs that I've had and explain what I was doing during those QSOs with the keyboard and the computer. And finally, I'm going to show you PSK Reporter, which is a very cool way to see a worldwide map and see who's hearing your signals right now. All right, so let's jump into this. Well, at this point, you should have already seen my video called Getting Started in Digital Modes. Uh, you should go look at that if you haven't seen it yet. But just to recap quickly, you need a radio that's capable of sideband transmission, not a CW only radio. You need a computer. You need a way to get the audio from your radio into your computer for decoding. You need a way to get the audio that's generated by the computer into your radio for transmission. And you need a way to trigger your radio, uh, the, the PTT circuit, so that you can get the radio to transmit when the computer is ready to do so. Now, if you have a computer uh, with an external sound card like the Signalink, it makes things a little bit easier. But you can just use the audio in and out of your computer if you don't have a sound card that's external like this Signalink. All right, so let's get going. Okay, so what is PSK31? Well, it's a digital mode. It's the most popular digital mode, and it facilitates text-based messages being sent over the airwaves. The speed that the data is transmitted is about the speed that people type, so it's really good for having conversations. Now, it's fantastic for QRP because the way the data is transmitted, the energy is concentrated into a little sliver and so, uh, like Morse code, the signal can just go farther. And the computer software can dig those signals out of the noise. Sometimes you can even see messages being decoded where you can't even see um, the waveform in the waterfall. So it's very cool. Uh, another great thing about it is for people who haven't yet learned Morse code or don't care anything about learning Morse code, this mode uh, actually is even technically a little better than Morse code for QRP because the computer can do the decoding uh, when a signal is super weak. So that's great. Um, also, people who have mic fright, maybe who aren't ready to start talking over the air, can use this just to type. That may be a little um, less anxiety producing for some people. Let's talk software. Since PSK31 is a digital mode, you gotta have a computer, you gotta be running some kind of specialized computer software. I use Ham Radio Deluxe. Uh, inside Ham Radio Deluxe, uh, which is a suite of applications, there's a module called DM780 or Digital Master 780. But you don't have to use that. You can use FL Digi, you can use uh, Airlink Express. There's a lot of free software that you can use for, uh, for PSK31. And you know what? They all look kind of similar. They all have to do the same thing, so they all have to have kind of similar features. Uh, for example, when you install the software, you have to configure it. And I'm going to show you some of that uh, in just a little bit. But um, you have to tell the computer software where the incoming audio uh, can be found from the radio so it can be decoded. You have to tell the software uh, where to send the computer generated audio to be transmitted over your radio. You have to tell the software how to trigger the push to talk circuit in your radio so that when it's ready to send it can uh, key that circuit so that the data can be sent out uh, as audio over the airwaves. Uh, they all have a waterfall display. Uh, so in the waterfall display uh, it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, you see the incoming data at the top of the screen, and then well, pixel by pixel, the data gets shifted downward so that you have the effect of a cascading uh, waterfall. And you can see all the data that's come in for the last 20 or 30 seconds before it falls off the bottom of the screen. Uh, they all have to have a, a big text area to show you the decoded text that's coming in so that you can read what somebody's typing to you. They have to have a place for you to type yourself uh, for messages that you want to send. They all have macro capability. So instead of having to type everything from scratch all day, uh, you can pre-write some text and assign it to function keys or to button presses. Uh, they also have logging capability. So since you're having a QSO, the authors of the software have given you the ability to either type in information into these fields for logging or to actually grab the data from the decoded text area uh, and assign it to certain fields in the log. So no matter what software you choose, you'll be able to get the job done. So in my mind, you know, pick whatever you're comfortable with and uh, go have fun. Confession time. 
long time ago when I got into digital modes, I was kind of bummed because most of the conversations are just pre-written text. To me, that seemed pretty impersonal. And I hate to think that all we're doing is just pushing buttons. Now, the thing about it is, if you think about it, in every conversation, you're going to have to tell somebody, of course, your call sign, uh, your name, your location, probably your radio, your antenna, how much power you're putting out. And it really would be just silly to type all that stuff from scratch all the time, right? So macros are a good thing. They're not a bad thing. And in the couple of QSOs I'm going to show you uh, in just a minute, you'll see that I'm editing my text on the fly and interjecting some things and, and making it so that it's less canned. Um, macros have the ability uh, for people who don't speak English to be able to put in some pre-written English text and be able to have contacts. Imagine you're having to type in a foreign language in real time at 50 words a minute. Mm, that's probably not going to happen, right? So macros allow a DX station for which English is not their first language to have conversations with us. Um, macros, you can have multiple macro sets. So all the software allows you to load in a macro file. So maybe you have one where the text is very concise for if you're trying to work a bunch of stations quickly, maybe you're uh, working uh, at a uh, working portable out in the world and you're trying to contact a bunch of stations in, within a couple hours. Uh, you can also have another macro set that's just kind of for your normal style, whatever that may be. Uh, a macro set for when the other person you're talking to is kind of verbose. Maybe you got one that's a, you know got a little more information going on. Uh, you can have a macro set for contests or various contests, depending on what the exchange is. So take advantage of that. And as far as what to put in your macros, you really there's just no substitute for eavesdropping on conversations and just reading the mail. Right? Read what other people are saying and how they're saying it. You'll quickly understand the jargon. Uh, it's not hard, believe me. Um, some people use abbreviations, of course. Uh, it's very CW-like as far as some of the style of it. But you can just read it, right? I mean, you don't have to decode the CW in your head. You're actually reading text going across the screen. So in a very short time, you'll be able to catch on and know how other people talk and, and get, you know, get with it. Um, macros also have the ability, the text that you're entering, to have placeholders and do a mail merge. So there's a list of fields that you can uh, put, like little tags, inside your text. And at real time, at runtime, the, the information will be substituted in. So like, for example, maybe in the, uh, the decoded text thing, you can grab the call sign, right click and say, call sign. Okay, from now on, in this conversation, any macro that you send that has call sign inside the text, it'll substitute in that guy's call sign. So by doing that, you can have some very clever uh, macros that allow you to uh, turn the conversation back around without having to type in that person's call sign. And uh, you'll, you'll, you'll really enjoy that, believe me. Okay, so we're talking about logging. So you can go grab somebody's call sign, write it to a log field. You know, you have, you can have the ability to just type in stuff in the log entry if you want. But the ability to, to select that text that's being decoded, right click, and then choose a field for that data to go into in order to write that to a log record, that's pretty cool. Um, also, your macros can save the log record. So maybe you've got a macro that just like says, okay, 73 and uh, good luck, you know, 73 and good DX in 2016. Uh, and then there can be a little tag there that, that initiates a save of the log file and then clearing out the fields for your next QSO. So macros are really powerful, and uh, you'll come to appreciate that as you go. A few more quick things before we start the hands-on demo. Tuning. So there are specific frequencies on each band for PSK31. On 20 meters, it's 14.070 megahertz. So you'd set your radio to 14.070, upper sideband mode, and just leave it. Now if you look at the waterfall, Think of 14.070 being in the bottom left corner. And then all the conversations that are happening you know, to the right of that, those are different frequency offsets from 14.070. Your computer takes care of that. So if you click on somebody up toward the top of the pass band, your computer is actually going to generate audio that's really high pitched. If you click on somebody down toward the bottom, it's going to generate some low pitched audio. So the computer handles that. Just Put the radio at the correct uh, watering hole frequency for whatever band you're working and just leave it. 
power output. Um, QRP, right? Five watts. Nobody transmits more than 25 or 30 watts uh, in the digital world because you, you don't need to. And we're all trying to live inside the same passband. So we're all at 14.070 on 20 meters. And all of our signals are little slivers. And if you transmit too loud of a signal, a distorted signal, you're gonna go outside that sliver that you should occupy. So to be a good citizen, we really need to make sure our signals uh, are where they need to be. Which brings me to my last point, audio levels. To get audio from the, from the radio into the computer to be decoded, you don't want the signal to be too weak, so you gotta feed it enough audio for being decoded. If you feed it too much audio, it's gonna be distorted when it gets to the software to be able to decode it. That's not good. Going the other way, when the computer generates audio and you send it to that microphone, you know, audio input of the radio, you don't wanna to send too much signal because it's gonna be distorted going out of your radio. You also don't want to send too little of a signal. You know, it'd be kind of like whispering into your microphone. So there are ways, and I'm going to show you how to adjust the, uh, the incoming signal and how to adjust the mic gain for your radio so that your signals are just where they need to be. And that leads me to the demo. All right, what I'm about to show you is how to hook up a Yaesu FT817 and an Elocraft KX2 to your computer. And in my case, I'm going to use the signal link box. I'm also going to show you how to set the levels of both the incoming audio and the audio to be transmitted to your radio. And that's going to involve us invoking the ALC meter and setting our, our radios uh, correctly so that now we've got perfect audio incoming and outgoing. And finally, I'm going to show a couple of video clips of a couple of QSOs that I've had recently. And I'm going to narrate that so that I can tell you what I was doing and show you what I was doing during those QSOs. And you'll see that I've made some mistakes. I'll tell you about it. Um, but it's okay, because so what, right? All right, let's do it. Connecting the Yaesu FT817 radio to a computer using a signal link box is really simple. And that's because the Yaesu FT817 has this data jack on the back of it. And the data jack gives you access to audio in and out and push to talk. So we only need this one cable. So what we do is we connect this cable to the data jack, like so. And then we connect the other side, which is an RJ45, into the radio jack of the signal link. Now all we have to do is connect the USB cable from the signal link to the computer. In contrast to the FT817, the Yellowcraft KX2 and KX3 don't have a data jack. So we've got to use two cables. And we actually have to get the audio from the radio through the headphone jack. And we'll plug that into the back of the signal link into the speaker jack. All right, so now we've got the audio from radio to the signal link. To get the audio from the signal link into the radio for transmission, uh, they provide a cable that has four poles that goes into the mic jack. One of these four poles is for push to talk. Now when the computer's ready, the signal link can fire that push to talk pin and then send the audio through the radio as if it was coming through a microphone. Let's hook up these radios now to the computer and set the levels. Before we set the level to the radio, we got to tell the software that we're using the signal link box so it knows where to get the audio and where to send the audio and how to trigger the radio to transmit. So I'm going to come up here and click Digital Master. This launches the digital portion of Ham Radio Deluxe. And now that we're here, there's nothing down here in the waterfall. I'm going to go up here and click Program Options, Sound Card. And for both the input and output, I'm going to choose USB Audio Codec. Now that is the driver for the signal link. And now that I've done that, you can see there's some data coming through in the waterfall. And one more thing, let's uh, make push to talk set to this button here, none, via sound card push to talk or radio vox. So now Hammer Radio Deluxe is not going to try to fire a serial port pin or something to, to trigger the radio. Okay, so 
We're done with the configuration, now it's time to set the levels. To set the optimum audio level going through the radio for transmission, the manual says the ideal audio input level to the transmitter will cause a few segments of indication on the ALC meter. So we're looking for a few segments of indication on the ALC meter. So if I go into the menu and set it for the ALC meter, come back over here to the computer software, I've got a macro that just says testing day, my call sign a few times. So when I click auto, it's gonna start sending that text. And we need to be looking at the ALC meter on the radio here when I do that. So here we go, three, two, one, go. Okay, it's transmitting now. And you can see that we've got about five or six bars of ALC. I'll turn this uh, TX control on the signal link down. Okay, so now that's too far down. So now we got nothing. Turn it back up just a little bit more. Okay, we ran out of time. Let's send this macro again. Okay, we got nothing on the meter. I'll turn it up just a little bit. All right. We've done this. Now let's do the KX2. Over here, we've got the macro loaded to send. And the manual for the KX2 says that the proper audio uh, should, uh, should indicate about five bars of deflection on the ALC meter. Now you don't see the ALC meter on this radio until you actually touch a button. Now that I've touched that and rotated it, you can see it there. Uh, I'm going to set the mic gain back to zero. So there should be nothing going on when we start transmitting and I'll just slowly increase the mic button. So I'm going to go over back here to the software and click OK. Now we're transmitting. Here, I'm going to turn the mic gain up. Here's two, three, four. Still nothing on the ALC meter. Oh, here's one bar, two, three, four, five. There you go. Now our transmission level is perfect for the KX2. Now let's go watch the video uh, and see a couple of QSOs. Just for time's sake, I'm going to show you this one QSO. This was shot earlier in the spring. It was a little windy outside and I'm huddled back behind my car. My laptop is inside this thing called a uh, Photopixel sunscreen by a company called Think Tank. They make uh, computer, or excuse me, photography bags. Uh, highly recommended. Uh, the thing folds down into a little disc about a foot um, in diameter and then pops out. Uh, even though it does shield the screen um, from the sun, you still need to wear a dark colored shirt to keep the reflections down. But highly recommended for using a computer outdoors. All right, let's have a QSO. What I'm doing now is I'm using the mouse at the bottom to just kind of hover over these conversations and then the digital master software is popping up what's being said or typed. I'm looking for somebody who's calling CQ. And I found it right here. So this guy's calling CQ. And watch the mouse. I'm going to go up here. I'm going to highlight the guy's call sign. And I'm going to right click and say call sign. Now on the left hand side of the screen you see the call uh, added to the log and if I run this uh, macro, which I'm doing right now, it substituted that guy's call sign in and then saying from me slash P which means portable. So I think you get a little more attention if you say slash P if you're working portable because people tend to like to work portable stations. Okay, now I'm just waiting to see if he comes back to me. I'm not uh, bailing on him. Okay, well he's calling CQ again, so he didn't hear me. He's got a strong signal. Notice how strong his signal is here. Very strong signal. So uh, I feel pretty good about being able to contact him uh, working QRP. If he's strong to me, maybe I'm uh, not too weak. So I've already got the macro still loaded. I just click auto and it's gonna send everything in my outgoing text box there. So I'm uh, trying to reply to him one more time. The PSE KN, that's just standard uh, PSK31 jargon, it means please. KN means, you know, this one station only. And in the transmission with a K, it means you're okay with people jumping in. That's from Morse code. All right, so I've answered, I've called once again and, and he hasn't responded. I'm still not giving up on him. Uh, hoping that he'll hear me and he's typing or doing something right now. 
okay, he's, something's being transmitted and it's, it's for me. So you can see N4CCB slash P day NM3B. Is that what it says? I need my glasses. Okay. So this is great. It looks like he's actually going to have a conversation with me. Please bear with me as first time I've used this program and having a little trouble, he says. So at this point, I'm ecstatic because I've got somebody that I can actually type to. Uh, so notice how he's, he's got a macro running now. So I, I highlight Wayne, right click, put it in the uh, name field and it shows up on the left hand side. I'm gonna grab his uh, city and state and put that in the QTH bucket. It fills in on the left hand side. He gives me his grid locator, so I'm gonna grab that and uh, put it in the locator field. Now, since I've put these, this information in these fields over there, it's all available to my macros for uh, use with placeholders. He's still sending me his macro, and I'm gonna go ahead and select my reply macro. I've got one called report, and notice it's already got his name in there. So now he's finished transmitting, and before I transmit to him, I'm just gonna type just a little bit. Normally, I like to go ahead and get it started and then type, as you'll see in a second. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and click auto. So now it's sending, and I've already said, no problem, I can't type too fast. I'm outside working portable at a park. Now it's sending the things above me. You can see above where I'm typing, there's a little line being drawn through. So I'm kind of out running the clock here, staying ahead of the, of the program sending my text. So I'm just telling him, hey, your signal's strong here in Middle Tennessee. Obviously that's not part of my macro, right? That's something that I hand typed. And now the rest of my macro kicks in and I give him my report. And you know, it's gonna give him my name and my QTH. And uh, this text is coming from uh, some pre-written text that I've got that's assigned to that macro called report. I can see a typo there. I, I typed in my, my, it's my city twice and I misspelled it the second time. I could have pulled that from uh, my, my tags uh, there. You see where the, the QTH is listed as Franklin. I could have done that, but I just hard coded this text in this particular macro. So he got what I said and then he's uh, responding to me. So I'm sitting here reading. Actually just got started back with digital uh, modes a few days ago. Okay, so at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and click my reply macro and choose the one called station. It's gonna send him information about my station. So he's saying, always used MixW, that's MixW software. And this is a long, I guess, ways from that program. So at this point, I'm gonna, he's already told me about his program, so I'm gonna type something to him that tells him I'm using Ham Radio Deluxe. So uh, a little something you know, personal that's not in my macro. He's saying, I have to figure out how to have it stop automatically. Well, here in Ham Radio Deluxe, if you click the auto button, it'll stop automatically when it finishes sending everything in your text buffer. Otherwise, if you click the send button, it'll just keep sitting there sending and waiting for you to type other characters before you have to stop it manually. So here goes the rest of his macro sending me his digital station gear macro, which has his radio listed and his antenna. So at this point, uh, I'm just reading to see if there's anything else I need to comment on. So I'm gonna go ahead and just say, I like to work portable uh, QRP in the field whenever I can, and today it's sunny outside, so just to let him know that I'm outside working portable and then I continue on with the rest of my macro. See, it substituted his name, it says Wayne, my station. I didn't have to type that, it's just part of a placeholder in my macro. He's using some interesting language. See where he says, uh, back she comes. You know, that's, that's kind of his style. That's not something that people normally say, uh, but that's great. I like it when people are kind of customize things like that. So while it's sending him the stuff I'd already typed in, to let him know my, my, uh, my software and that I'm working portable. Here at the bottom of my macro, while it's sending the stuff, I'm adding that I also have a blog about QRP and giving my URL. 
doing a little bit of QRP evangelizing here. Sorry for uh, anybody who works me that uh, doesn't like QRP. I, I'm apologizing in advance, although I suspect you're not going to be watching this video. <laughs> Okay, I'm telling him uh, what my antenna is, and in case he wants to go, that my QRZ.com info is correct, in case he wants to go look me up and send me an email or a QSL card or something. So at this point, I don't know if he's going to go another round with me or just sign with me, but that's okay, either way. I was in no hurry and glad to have a rag chew, actually. I, that's, I like it when that happens. So I'm sending it back to him. So I, you know, B to you, back to you. And now I'm going to clear. Uh, well, I'm not clearing it yet. All right, now I cleared it. So at this point, I, I go ahead and select uh, that macro, which lets me turn the conversation around before I even know what else I'm going to type to him. I see that he's saying that he missed the first part completely. So I go ahead and grab that text again that I sent during the first part in anticipation of pasting that back into my uh, next transmission to him. So I'm going to put the cursor up here and then uh, click on my macro that, that uh, sends the start of a transmission that's just, you know, him, day, me. There it is. Okay, now I'm going to paste in the stuff from the start of that conversation that he missed. But now when I'm reading his text here, He's saying that the signal seems to be really strong, but then drops out regularly. And now look at the signal in the bottom left-hand corner. Notice how weak it is. We've got some serious QSB going on. His signal was white earlier, and now it's kind of just dark blue. So I can see that he's getting ready to get off the, the conversation with me. So uh, at the top, I just say, yeah, we got some strong QSB, QSB. Uh, I said earlier, and then I pasted in the stuff, you know. So I was going to tell him again what he missed. But then I noticed him typing up there saying, uh, and again, nice to meet you for the first time. Uh, it looks like he's saying hope to talk to you again or something. So at that point, I delete in my buffer what I was going to send. Uh, now he doesn't, he says 73, but he doesn't say SK, you know, station closing. And so I don't send him my 73 macro. I just say, okay, yeah, we got some strong QSB. Nice to meet you, Wayne. Uh, 73, my friend, and I'm still not sure if he's coming back to me, so I'm not sending my station closing. I'm just kind of leaving it hanging. Uh, so at the very end, instead of, you know, instead of sending SK, SK, it's just sending, you know, PSE, KN again. I just don't know, since he didn't say his station was closing, uh, so I'm leaving it open. Okay, and I'm waiting just in case he's saying something else. But he never does. And so the conversation was over. So uh, takeaway here, I hope you saw how I'm editing my uh, contents in real time and kind of spicing things up a little bit, kind of adding something personal in response to what the other person has said. I'm still using my macros. I'm also customizing those things on the fly to make it a little more personal. So uh, there you go. I hope you found that interesting and maybe a little helpful. That's just how I do things. I may not be doing it right, but it works for me. If you've got a better way to do the things you saw there, let me know because I'm seriously you know, interested in how you do it. Um, before we go, I've got to show you PSK Reporter. Now, PSK Reporter is a website, pskreporter.info. So when you go to pskreporter.info and then choose to display the map, you're going to see a worldwide map and at the top you can say you know what band you want to look at and uh, what the call sign was you're looking for you know to see who's received that uh, that call sign and you can specify time periods like you know who who's seen this in the last 15 minutes who's seen that call sign in the last you know 24 hours and it puts little push pins on the map with uh, how many minutes it's been since that signal was last heard so if you want to know if your signal's getting out, if anybody's hearing you, or what the propagation's like right now, to see if maybe you could get to California or whatever, just send a message, testing day in 4 ccb testing day in 4 ccb and just see who's hearing you. It's really cool. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun, and you'll, you'll love it. To wrap this up, 
PSK31 is interesting. Uh, if you're stuck in talking or stuck in Morse code land, try something new. You might actually enjoy this more than you think. Um, because of the concentrated energy being sent, uh, it's great for QRP. You can work a lot of DX with only five watts. Uh, for people who don't know Morse code or don't care anything about learning Morse code, this is a great mode. So uh, give that a try. Just get your computer and radio hooked up, download some free software, and uh, go for it. And let me know how it goes. Thanks for watching.